Here's a quick overview of what will be covered in this lesson. First we will go over what COBOL is. Then we will go over COBOL's format followed by COBOL structure. Next we will install the VS Code COBOL extension followed by the GNU COBOL compilers installation. Finally, we will end this lesson with a Hello World program. COBOL stands for Common Business Oriented Language. And the first release of COBOL was back in 1959, so COBOL has been around for over 60 years. Even though COBOL is one of the first computer languages, it is still in use today. COBOL's primary use is for business applications. So some examples of COBOL applications include things like HR payroll and banking applications. Also, it's a relatively simple programming language and is inherently self-documenting. However, this comes at the cost of making the language more verbose. COBOL programs must adhere to a specific format. This format requires that particular information be located in specific columns of the code. This figure shows the five areas that make up COBOL code. Columns 1 through 6 make up the sequence number area. This area is used to give each line of code a sequence of numbers. In the past, this was used primarily when programmers used to feed stacks of punch cards into a computer when loading their programs. Numbering the lines of code would allow the programmer to figure out the correct card order if the cards were ever dropped. The seventh column is referred to as the indicator area and this is primarily used to declare comments and a debugging line. It can also be used for a continuation of lines, but this is rarely used. Columns 8 through 11 are referred to as Area A. There are several items that must begin in Area A. They include things such as the division, section, and paragraph headers. Columns 12 through 72 are referred to as Area B. Area B contains entries, sentences, statements, and clauses. Finally, columns 73 through 80 are known as the identification or comment area, and this area was used to identify a program in case more than one stack of cards were mixed together. This is the hierarchical structure of a COBOL program. At the lowest level, there are statements. Statements start with verbs, and verbs show an action. A few examples of verbs would be initialize, move, set, search, and add, you can use these verbs with an operand, which is the data that is to be operated on by the verb, and make a statement. Sentences are at the next level, and they contain one or more statements and end with a period. Paragraphs are made up of one or more sentences. Paragraphs can be used as modules that are called by other modules. If you need a block of code that can be used several times during the execution of your program, then use a paragraph. Sections contain paragraphs, and sections give the program structure, and may actually be necessary to include so that information that the program needs is stored within the section. Finally, at the top, there are divisions. There are a total of four divisions. First, there's the identification division. The name of the author, the name of the program, and what the program does all goes here. Then there's the environment division. This division describes the system that the program will run on along with an input-output section that is used to link the names used in the program to the external file names on a disk. Next, there's the data division. This is a place that is used to describe the data that will be used in the program in addition to storage and memory that will be used. Finally, there's the procedure division. The program's processing occurs here by writing instructions on how to take data in and manipulate that data. Now let's install the Visual Studio Code COBOL extension. Open VS Code and click on the extensions icon. Type in COBOL. Click on the first link and click install. You now have installed the VS Code COBOL extension. Let's install GNU COBOL for Mac OS Catalina. You will first need to install Homebrew by going to brew.sh, copy this line, and then paste it into a terminal. Press enter. Type in your password. Press return. Now type brew install gnu-cobol. 
You can check the installation by typing COB space hyphen X, and you should get the error that there are no input files. Let's install GNU COBOL for Windows 10. We'll first install 7-zip, which will allow us to extract the GNU COBOL file. Go to the download link and download the file that's appropriate to your Windows version. After the file's finished downloading, double click the file to begin the installation process. Then click the install button. Next, we're going to search Google for GNU COBOL. Go ahead and click on the first link. Then click the download button. After the file's finished downloading, go ahead and extract the file. Now go ahead and copy and paste the folder into the directory of your choice. In this case, I chose the root directory. Now we can open the GNU COBOL folder and scroll down to the README file, which will give us the installation instructions. Now we want to use Google to search for SIGWIN. Go to the install SIGWIN link. Download the installation file. After the file's finished downloading, go ahead and start the installation. When it gets to the screen during the installation process, change the view to full. We want to first search for LIB GMP. Click in the new column so that these packages will be installed. Next, search for LIB DB. Click in the new column to install these packages. Next, search for N curses. Now click in the new column so that these packages will be installed. Now search for GCC. Now click inside the new column in order to install the following packages. Now search for make. Now click inside the new column to install the following AutoMake, CMake, and Make packages. Then click Next. Click Next to continue to install SIGWIN and install the packages.
Click Next and then Finish. Now open SIGWIN. Now go to the directory where the GNU COBOL folder is located. Go inside the folder. Type dot forward slash configure and press enter to begin the configuration process. Now type make and press enter. To make sure that the make process worked correctly, we can run a series of tests by typing make, check, and then press enter. Please note that running these tests do take a while. You can run a series of COBOL 85 optional tests by typing make test. However, this test may fail because the test file is missing. You can see more detail if you go to the tests COBOL 85 folder in the readme file. You can copy and paste this link into your address bar in your browser and go to this website and then download the test file. After the file's downloaded, you can go ahead and extract it. And then copy and then paste the file in the COBOL 85 test directory. Now go back to SIGWIN and type make test and press enter and the tests will begin to run. Note that these tests do take a while. You can check the results of the tests by going to the COBOL 85 test directory and going to the summary file, opening that file, and you can see the results. Now that we ran all the tests, we can go ahead and install GNU COBOL by typing make, install, and pressing enter. You can check the installation by typing COBC space hyphen X and pressing enter. You should see the no input files error. Next, we want to check the GNU COBOL directory. In order for GNU COBOL to work correctly with Windows PowerShell, we will have to add some directories to our path. Type path into the search. Go into the environmental variables. Edit the path. Go to sigwin forward slash bin and copy the location. Click New and paste that location into the path. Press OK. Now go to SIGWIN, User, Local, Bin, and copy that location. Press New and paste that location into the path. Press OK. Press OK. And press OK again. Now we can see if everything's set up correctly by going into VS Code and opening up a terminal and typing COBC space hyphen X, pressing Enter, and you should see an error that says no input files. Let's install GNU COBOL for Ubuntu 20.04 LTS. 
open up a terminal and type sudo apt-get install gnu cobol and press enter. Type y and press enter. You can check the installation by going to VS Code, opening up a terminal, and typing cobc space hyphen x, pressing enter, and you should see the error that says no input files. Now let's code our first program, Hello World. First make a file named hello.cbl. Let's start the program with a comment by placing an asterisk in column 7 and typing hello world as the comment. Next we will go to column 8 in area A and add the identification division, which is required for any COBOL program and must have a period after the word division. Next we will add the program ID paragraph starting in column 8 in area A. This is the only required line of code in the identification division. There must be a period following the program ID and it must be followed by the name of the program, in this case hello underscore world, with a period at the end of the program name. Now we will add the procedure division, again starting in column 8 in area A. There must be a period after the word division. Next we will add a statement with the action display to column 12 in area B, and then type the words and characters that we want displayed on the screen. In this case, we will type hello, comma, world, exclamation point to the end of the statement and add a period. Finally, to stop the execution of the program, we will add the stop run statement ending with a period. Now we need to compile the program, so go to the terminal and type cobc space hyphen x followed by the name of the program, in this case hello.clb, and press enter. This creates a file named hello.exe. To run this file, type dot forward slash hello and press enter. You should now see the results hello world printed on the display. Thank you for watching. If you considered this lesson to be helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. I look forward to our next lesson, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.